After you've purchased your K-Line irrigation system from your dealer, the first step you'll take in installing the system is to review the engineering plan the dealer has given you. The engineering plan is specific for your application needs. Your plan will show the distance between each pod and the length of your feeder line. Next, you'll start flagging the pod locations in your field. Measure the distance between each pod with a measuring wheel or a tape measure and use colored flags to mark the pod location. The design we are using in this video calls for each pod to be 50 feet apart. Next, roll out your tubing. You can do this in many different ways. You can unroll your tubing by hand or use a spool out reel. The dealer may suggest using two sizes of tubing to match your field design. If your design calls for two sizes of tubing, the plan your dealer gave you will identify the correct number of pods that need to be placed on each tube. Slide the pod line along the side of your flags. Leave about five to six feet of tubing before the first pod for the end cap. Slide the pods along the tubing, leaving one pod at each flag. A fast and easy way to place the pods is to hook the lip of the last pod and slide it to the locations. You must be careful not to twist the tubes when unrolling or placing the pods. When the pods are in place, it's necessary to assemble the sprinklers and attach the sprinklers to the tubing. First, drill a hole into the pipe with a 916 spade bit using the green line or lines as a guide for the placement of the hole. Be careful to only drill through the top side of the pipe. A washer may be welded to the drill bit to keep the bit from drilling into the bottom of the pipe. Next, place the tapping saddle over the hole in the U-bolt that is molded into the pod. Check the saddle before assembly to make sure there is a rubber o-ring on the saddle. Now, align the saddle with the hole in the pipe and tighten the nuts over the washers. It is important to tighten each side evenly so that the saddle is parallel to the bottom of the pod. If this is not done properly, the adapters and sprinklers will be at an angle and the discharge stream will not clear the top of the pod. Tighten the adapter and sprinkler assembly into the saddle. There are different sprinkler options available. Always refer to the dealer plan to determine the proper sprinkler head. If you're using the K-Line NAN Impact Sprinkler, use the 11 16th open end wrench to secure the sprinkler to the riser. If you are using the K-Line Nelson Windfighter Sprinkler, you can easily hand tighten the sprinkler head into the adapter. If your plan calls for pressure regulators, you will install the K-Line nipple into the tapping saddle using a 1 and 1 8 open end wrench. Then screw the regulator into the nipple. You can easily hand tighten the sprinkler head into the riser. When you install the fittings on the tubing, it's important to start with a straight cut on the tube. A clean cut ensures proper seat. Then use the KLARC 40 by 32 reducing coupler to connect the tube. You should wet the end of the fittings to act as a lubricant when installing the compression fittings. To ensure your tubing is properly fitted into the K-Line tubing, you can use a small rubber mallet to drive the ends of the K-Line tube together. Once you've properly installed the fitting into the tubing, thread the fitting over the pipe and use a pipe wrench to tighten them. It is important that the fitting is tight. Once your pod line is complete, connect the pod line to the feed line with a quick connect fitting such as an APU fitting or cam lock fitting. This allows you to separate the feed line from the pod line and makes moving and winterizing easier. Then roll out the length of the feeder line specified in your engineering plan. Once the line is complete and the feeder line is installed, you can attach the feeder line to the riser. Next, turn the water on to flush out any foreign objects out of the line. Now you're ready to install the end cap and start irrigating. There are various ways to attach the line to your four-wheeler. You can use a rope tied to the four-wheeler or a small hook to grab the end cap. For safety reasons, you should always pull from the hitch on the four-wheeler. K-Line also has an easy shift cart that makes moving the lines easier because you'll never have to get off the four-wheeler. There are a few reasons why you move the system when it's running. 
First, it's not worth the time and the hassle of stopping the pump since the system is so quickly moved. Second, water keeps the tubing cool in the summer and having water in the tube also keeps the tube from kinking. If the line should ever kink, it will not hurt the tubing. All you need to do to fix the problem is to go back and lay the kink out. Most users leave their system running when moving it. If you do decide to move the K-Line tubing without the water running, we recommend running the water through the system first to cool the tubing, or move in the morning or evening hours when temperatures are cooler. At the end of your irrigation season, you will need to winterize your K-Line system according to the specifications from your dealer. Unhook it from the riser, take the end cap off, and move it over to an incline to drain as much water out of the system as possible. After draining the water out of the system, simply cap off the ends to keep debris and small animals out of the lines. Should you have any questions regarding your K-Line irrigation system, contact your dealer or go to the K-Line website for more information. Thank you.